to be honest, I should have made this video first before we started talking about vectors, but I think we have enough intuition about what vectors are and their geometric implications and what unit vectors are. And by understanding those things, we can fully understand how adding the subtracting vectors work. But before we do that, I'm going to introduce one more notation of vectors that I have not discussed before. So we're going to define a coordinate system. So let's take this color. All right, hold up. Okay, I'm going to define a coordinate system. So it's going to be something like that. So this will be x, this will be y, using the right-hand coordinate system. And as I told you before, maybe in the first video, I think, I told you that the, the, there's unit vectors that correspond to the axes. So for instance, the x-axis corresponds to I, the i unit vector. And then the y-axis is the j unit vector. And the k unit vector corresponds to the z-axis. And as we discussed before, these are all lengths of 1 or magnitudes of 1. And we could use that idea of you know projecting of vectors into those three directions. So we're going to take uh, an arbitrary vector um, that lives in three-dimensional space. So let's say it lives right there. Uh, this is a point and it can be defined. Let me try to make this straight. It's defined by that. So that is a vector A. So we could define it by projecting the sides of the vector onto the xy plane as well as the xz plane and we could fully define this vector. So what this side is going to be is the projection onto the x-axis. So it'll be ax, and this will be the projection on the y-axis, ay, and then az. So now that we know basically the, the lengths of the projections of each uh, in each direction, we could rewrite um, the a vector in this new notation. So a vector is equal ax i hat, plus a y j hat plus a z k hat. So now we can write vectors in, in a very algebraic sense. So we have a term here, a term here, and a term here that correspond to three different directions and can define a vector up to in, in three dimensions. Now, um, I didn't discuss this earlier, but now we could dis um, derive the magnitude of a vector. So, what we're gonna ex I'm gonna explain this in a two-dimensional case because it's easier to show, and then I'm gonna elaborate on and extrapolate the idea to three-dimensional space. So this is our x, y plane, and we're gonna have this um, arbitrary vector r. That is r, and then. As we did before, we're going to project these, this vector onto the x-axis and the y-axis. So this will be ry. Um, this will be rx. So as we, um, by definition of the right-hand coordinate system, um, these vectors, i, j, and k, they are all perpendicular to each other. So that means x, the x and y-axis are perpendicular to each other. And by that logic, this um, these two lines right here, the x-axis, or rx and ry, must be perpendicular to each other. So, and we know that the length of the, ma of the, length of the vector is equal to the magnitude of the vector. So by simply using the Pythagorean theorem, we could say that the magnitude of r, which is just, it could be written this way, it could be written just as r, uh, or uh, those are the most common ways to write the magnitude. So we could write the def or define the length of r by using the Pythagorean theorem. So we could say r is the square root of rx squared plus ry squared. And then we could define it like that. Now we could extrapolate this idea into three dimensions by simply adding another term. This is the more general case. So imagine we have all three components instead of the two x and y components, we just add another term to this and then we simply take a square root. If you want to see a mathematical derivation of that, I'll post the video later, if not already uploaded right now, and it'll prove why this is true. 
But as of now, this is the definition of the magnitude of a vector. This is the more general case because this right here just assumes that the z, r z is just equal to zero. So it just simplifies to that. So this is probably the one to remember. So now we're going to add and subtract vectors geometrically. So to do that, we're going to take an arbitrary vector a, arbitrary vector b, and we're going to add those together. There's two different ways to add them. Um, there's a, using the like a parallelogram method or the tip to tail method, whichever you prefer. Um, the parallelogram, you just make a you just make a parallelogram so with these vectors and the angles in between such that this angle right here is equal to this angle right there. So by doing that, um, if you want A plus B, you simply connect this point right here with this point right there, and we simply draw a line going into the direction of these two vectors. So that is A plus B. Really, I put vector symbols, okay. And then there's another way. You simply, instead of doing the parallelogram method, you simply translate this vector onto, or take this point, translate it so that this point is t touching this arrow point of the other vector, and then simply connect the line that, that connects them. So for instance, A is pointing this direction. Now we're gonna move B upward. So we're gonna do this. We're gonna do that. So this is A, this is B. So simply connect these two points like that. That is A plus B. That's how you do it geometrically. Now we're going to start defining how to um, subtract vectors geometrically. So before I do that, I'm going to define what it means to have a negative vector. So what we're going to do, I'm going to choose a different color. So let's say this purple pink color. We're going to say A. This is a different A value, or it could be the same, it doesn't matter. So A, the vector A, is um, is this vector that points in this orientation. But when you add it, or when you place a negative side in front of the vector, that simply flips the whole direction of this vector 180 degrees, or simply just points in the complete opposite direction. So really, it, it's done this. So. That is negative a. It just it was flipped in this orientation. You can also think of that as a geometric property. You you're basically rotating this vector 100 a 180 degrees. So with that being said, we can actually subtract vectors now. So as we traditionally have shown, that a plus b is you know when you add tip to tail and so forth. But if you want to do a minus b. You could just, uh, it's kind of disguised within this notation. But what really it is, it's a my, or plus negative b. So we could have a, this is a, and this is b. So what you want to do is simply rearrange b so that it flips its orientation. So now we're going to say that a is this, and then B is the negative of that, so it'll be our negative B is that. So now we we reuse the process that we learned earlier of how to add vectors, and we now um, complete the process. So I'm not going to do both ways. I'm just use the tip and tip to tail method. So if you want A minus B, so this is A. Then we're going to translate B onto this, so it'll be like this. It's horizontal, I believe. Okay, and then this is going to be A minus B. That's A. That is negative B. So when you add those two together, you get that vector right there. And then you could repeat this process by, you know, if you want to do the parallelogram method. Um, you simply just make a parallelogram like this and you get your answer. So, um, so that's all great. Um, that's more the geometric side of things. But what if we, we don't have some simple geometry like that? Like what if the arrows live in three dimensions? Then it's harder to do these, um, you know, these geometric transformations. 
in your head as well as on paper. So that's where this new notation comes in. We convert this geometric um, vector into a more algebraic one by splitting it into like terms, so to speak, as you learned in maybe algebra. Um, you know, you can't collect like term, or you, you can collect like terms only if they are like terms. That seems kind of redundant, but you'll see what I mean. So in the general case, like let's say we have a vector um, a, and it's defined as a x i plus uh, a y j plus a z, z uh, oh k hat not z hat k hat okay. And we have another vector b, and it's defined in a very similar fashion. So b y j plus b z k. And now all you have to do, as I said earlier, is collect like terms. So what you did, you broken these up into components and then collected like terms. So, so A plus B is simply AX plus BX I plus AY plus BY J plus AZ plus B, Z, K. So that is the very simple way of um, showing um, or calculating the true vector without any geometric properties. So you might be asking, how do we find these components? Okay, now that's another question. So there's a lot of different ways to do it. Um, again, one way we found um, a vector is by using unit vectors. So if you know the magnitude of a vector and you know a general sense of what direction it's going to be, um, you could use the idea of unit vectors to calculate the actual um, vector. Or you can also use trig trigonometric properties. So let me write the first one. So you could say that A is you know some unit vector, some golden unit vector. Um, A U um, this will be, you know, a, a, you find that unit vector, you multiply by the scalar magnitude of that vector, and then you get your, your vector a. And you could split these up into a, uh, ax plus ay plus az, whatever. Or you could uh, actually use trig to define some vectors. So I'm only going to do it in a two dimensional case because that's probably the most convenient way um, to define vectors is. And with, while using trig is in the 2D case. If you're using, if you're in three dimensions, it's probably best to always use a unit vector, but there might be some situations while, where it's easier to project the image into different planes and then add them in that sort of fashion. But it's up to you. Um, really, I, this is only useful in two dimensions. The trig way is useful in two dimensions. This is useful in three or even higher dimensions if we're talking about theoretical subjects. So, what we can do um, is define a vector here. Say you're given some length or some these properties where you know these values. So we say that's uh, let's call this R. So it'd be R X R Y. So it's either you know this angle or you know these two lengths, and you somehow um, if you know these two lengths, then you can just rewrite them in terms of this notation. But if you know the angle, then you could just write uh, Rx equals R cosine theta, Ry, R sine theta. Now, keep in, always remember, this is a, a crucial thing. Um, know, you have to know the direction of these vectors. So let me, so this is a very fortunate case. So I defined all, the whole vector in the positive quadrant, or quadrant one. So what I'm going to do now is extend this idea into the four different quadrants of the X or the Cartesian coordinate system. So this is Y, this is X. So I'm going to take this color and let's say I define it here. So this is going to be, I don't know, T and this is going to be some angle uh, theta. So what we're going to do, uh, so this is Tx, Ty. As we have noticed, 
this value is actually negative because we define the positive x-axis pointing in towards the right, but tx actually lives in the negative x um, axis. And then ty is that it stays positive because it lives with the positive y-axis. So when we actually write the definition of t, or not the definition of t, but we define t as negative t, uh, at, wait, hold up. Okay, negative t cosine theta i plus t sine theta j. Or if we want uh, negative uh, tx i plus tyj. So just remember to keep the orientation correct. Um, make sure you define your axes with the right hand rule or the right hand coordinate system. And make sure when values are actually negative, you include a negative sign. Um, it's all, or what you can do, this is not suggested, I, I suggest doing this way. But you can leave these all positive, but when you do your calculation or your computation, you make these negative values. So you could say, so this is going a little bit ahead, uh, we could define tx to be negative um, 5 or something, and then ty to be positive 1. So now you could write t as txi plus tyj. That way, this all this remains positive, but when you plug in negative 5, it it works out fine because you include that negative within your definition. So that is up to you. Um, I prefer doing it in this way so that way you define every numerical quantity or given numerical quantity as positive and you plug it into the general um, equation. So yeah, that these are the definitions or this, these are the ways to define a vector um, to add a vector and to subtract a vector. As, uh, as you have, may have guessed earlier, a plus b, if you want to do subtraction, you simply you know, multiply by a negative of all these quantities. So it would be ax minus bx i plus ay minus by j plus az minus bz k. So subtraction and addition is basically uh, all these ways to, diff to do them, different ways to define them. The best way if you're using three dimensions is to do this. If you find a unit vector, then multiply by the scalar magnitude. If you're living in two dimensions, then it's probably easier to do some trig. And then you can define all these other ways and make sure you're consistent with your signs, your coordinate systems, and so forth. So that'll be it for adding and subtracting vectors. I hope you enjoy the video. Um, there'll be more videos on this soon. I think the next video is going to be about, uh, I'm, I'm gonna do a few examples of adding and subtracting vectors. So this is more um, tangible to your learning. So that'll be it for now. Um, look forward to the next video.